Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 13th, 2020, recorded on 6.27 p.m. Eastern Time. Taking a live look right now at Tropical Storm Sally, a couple of things kind of remain on the system today. First of all, we still do have some northwesterly shear that is being impinged on our storm, and you can kind of tell that how the showers and thunderstorms remain a little bit lopsided off towards the east of where our thunderstorm is at the moment in, in our uh, deepest area and where the center is. These two areas are not co-located together, which means this does have a little bit of northwesterly shear, and that has actually forced uh, the showers and thunderstorms into portions of interior Florida today where we've seen a copious amount of rainfall along the Florida west coast, and even pretty far inland we have seen decent rain showers all the way through the Orlando metro and extending well out of that. And you can also see that we do have some deep convection right now in the Florida Panhandle from about uh, north of Cedar Key all the way through Tallahassee and near Pensacola, that these uh, convective bands will kind of be rotating in on shore as the storm generally uh, kind of grinds to a very slow movement over the next 12 to 24 hours or so. Now we turn our attention real quickly here to Hurricane Paulette. Yeah, maximum sustained winds right now nearing 85 miles per hour, 80 to 85 miles per hour. Pressure right around 974 millibars or so. And again, the storm does have a lot better of an appearance today. First of all, from earlier, you can see that we had a pretty well-established central dense overcast with a pretty well-established eye here. This is the small, tiny island of Bermuda right here. And again, this is... Uh, strengthening as it approaches Bermuda. And again, you can see these deep thunderstorm towers uh, at the very end of the loop kind of rotating around. This will help to strengthen our storm even more as it heads almost right over Bermuda. So for folks here in Bermuda, obviously going to take the brunt and preparations should have been completed hours ago, but you have a mere couple really of uh, really the next about hour or so to finish up preparations as the first squall right now is about to pass through. And then after that point, you're going to start to get into the central dense overcast and the patterns of more uh, rainfall. So you really only have probably another half hour to an hour to finish preparations. Obviously, everyone in Bermuda right now should be hunkering down as this is going to pass right over the island of Bermuda, then curve towards the northeast. And as it's going to start to slow down, this will bring somewhat of a prolonged effect of uh, impacts across this area. Obviously, the main impacts right now is going to be flooding rain, storm surge, and extremely dangerous winds up to 100 to 115 miles per hour in some of those higher gusts. Now, we'll also take a look here at Tropical Depression 20. Still a pretty loosely organized system, and it is not really in a hurry right now to get better organized. But we have seen an area of more persistent convection as the sun goes down. We've seen showers and thunderstorms kind of develop. Again, it's pretty hard to tell where the inferred center is, but we can reasonably infer that it's somewhere in here, which means that the uh, showers and thunderstorms are actually not there. But it could also be in this very small area in here, and we do have thunderstorms kind of around it. But again, they are not necessarily trying to build an inner core structure at the moment. Again, it does take a lot for these storms to get, uh, it, it does take a little bit of time for these storms to get better organized. And uh, certainly Tropical Depression 20 is not in a hurry, and that's going to play a factor, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. First of all, here with Tropical Storm Stout, Sally, sustained winds right now nearing 60 miles per hour, moving off towards the west-northwest at about 9 miles per hour. This is about 1 p.m. tomorrow. This is a hurricane here uh, by the Hurricane Center. This is forecast to be a hurricane at landfall. And you can see between 1 p.m. Monday and 1 a.m. Tuesday, the storm has not really moved that much. You can see that all of these dots in here, these center fixes uh, that are kind of located in through there, kind of uh, co-located with very slow moving uh, a very slow moving system. So this could dump a lot of heavy rainfall. Now the rainfall prediction here from the weather prediction center up in Maryland, they are actually forecasting a swath of 15 to 20 plus inches of rainfall across uh, portions of far southeastern Louisiana and portions of far southwestern Mississippi, 
with uh, an isolated 6 to 10 maxima all the way into Hiroshima. And this is a very real concern as we progress throughout the rest of the evening. This could be a situation where we actually do end up getting rainfall amounts that exceed, you know, 20 inches. And this is very concerning, obviously, combined with a very deadly storm surge of around 7 to 11 feet from about Lake Bourne all the way to near Ocean Springs. And then from that point on to the Mississippi-Alabama border, about 4 to 7 feet of storm surge. And then from there, anywhere from 2, uh, really from 2 to 4 inches to, through the Alabama-Florida, and then all the way down to the near Cedar Key, 1 to 3 feet of storm surge. This whole entire area is very prone to storm surge. That's why storm surge values are going to kind of range all the way over to near Cedar Key, Florida. And it is something of concern as we progress throughout time that we could see a very significant storm surge threat kind of unfold. And of course, if, if the storm is a little bit stronger than currently anticipated, it is entirely possible that these storm, sur storm surge values could be a little bit higher uh, but again, obviously, the worst of the impacts are going to be felt from just uh, right near the landfall point and points towards the east of that are going to feel the worst of the conditions. Now, as for Tropical Storm Paula, again, strengthening storm right now on approaching to Bermuda, a very dangerous situation. This is expected to slow down into tonight and then make that turn towards the northeast as a trough of low pressure digs in. This is now going to be carrying our storm towards the northeast, and it's still going to be strengthening at this time and is expected to become a major Category 3 hurricane as it passes uh, right near Bermuda and then right over and towards the northeast of Bermuda, eventually weakening here on Wednesday and then continue weakening as it moves out into the open Atlantic Basin with no other threats to land other than the swells that will kind of radiate outwards all the way from the Northeast United States and the Canadian Maritimes all the way down to Florida, the Bahamas, and the Lesser Antilles, you will feel some of that rough surf and higher seas uh, from Hurricane Paulette. And this will be something, obviously, to kind of take note of as uh, rip currents uh, at high tides, especially uh, maybe some isolated coastal flooding that can and has killed people. So just kind of want to make you aware of that. And as for Tropical Depression 20, this is also expected to become a major hurricane on Thursday. Right now, it's not really expected to do much, but it, in continued intensification, and this could become a tropical storm by tonight, although right now that remains heavily uncertain. We'll have to wait here for the 11 o'clock advisory to kind of see what's going on. Uh, but you can see the general west-northwest trend continues throughout the next couple of days. Becomes a hurricane probably sometime by Tuesday afternoon and starts its journey out into the open Atlantic Basin, where it will likely become a very powerful major hurricane somewhere towards the northeast of the Lesser Antilles. However, we cannot be explicitly uh, kind of writing off that this couldn't get a little bit further west and maybe impact portions of the Lesser Antilles. This doesn't look to be a significant concern from Barbados southward. You really don't have a threat from this as it's not likely to really kind of just beeline towards that area. But this will, if this does not intensify quick enough, this could actually move a little bit further west and then maybe intensify a little bit. And some of the GFS ensembles have been kind of highlighting the potential for the storm to sneak a little bit further west than currently anticipated, which puts it on a whole new trajectory, which we're really not going to discuss right now. But we will talk about some of that towards the end here. First of all, though, what's going on with Tropical Storm Sally? Again, the very sheared appearance of it today comes uh, in the form and fashion of what we had from a couple of days ago. We look about 18 hours, 12 hours even. We have this upper level low sitting right across the Carolinas right now. And this has been producing some northwesterly shear in the kind of the lower levels of the atmosphere but this has been providing some northwesterly shear on our storm. And that has kind of continued. And you can really see that that north uh, shear kind of continues. And on this particular run of the H wharf, it does get up under an upper level anticyclone, but the storm remains pretty lopsided and never really finds an alleyway to significant organization. 
And this is barely even a hurricane here, a, probably a strong tropical storm, borderline hurricane on the model here by uh, Tuesday evening. This would be by 8 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday, making landfall near the Louisiana-Mississippi uh, border here. Um, but other models today, like the 18Z GFS forecast here, do show the storm a little bit slower. This is Zero Z Tuesday, and it's still sitting off here. Finally intensifies it down to, or really down and intensifies it to about 978, making landfall around the Louisiana uh, Mississippi border under again an upper level anti cyclone and a pretty favorable environment to strengthen. This is suggestive that we will likely see bouts of intensification, but the GFS has been slower again by this time. Uh, on the 12Z run, it was already inland, and today's run, the 18Z run, is a little bit further off towards the east. And we can see that the last uh, three runs, including this past run at 18 Zulu time have been shifting the storm further east and a little bit slower, and thus it's really only sitting uh, maybe about a couple of miles inland or right on the coast at about 2 p.m. Tuesday at this very time frame. So it is possible that we actually might get the storm to move even slower, which on this particular track, too, would be a very bad storm surge threat for portions of the Mississippi, Louisiana, and even off towards the Florida Panhandle side here. This would be a very bad storm surge outcome, very bad with the rainfall. So obviously everyone here needs to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And again, prepare for the worst in being a Category 3 hurricane potentially. That ceiling is still there this afternoon. And if it does, however, if it does not get organized by tomorrow morning, we will likely see the rate of intensification be a little bit slower. Obviously, land threats would be, uh, or the land uh, interaction would hinder that. And shear is expected to increase right before the landfall point which may actually help to uh, kind of level off the bit of intensification. So again, prepare for the worst as in a Category 3 hurricane making landfall somewhere near the Louisiana-Mississippi border, but prepare for, but also hope for the best in that you get a moderate tropical storm or low-grade hurricane coming through. Either way, there is likely to be some significant impacts along the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and even the Florida Panhandle borders here. Over the next several days, landfall is expected sometime here, uh, really uh, by uh, late Thursday uh, in maybe even early Thursday here in through portions of early uh, Thursday afternoon and then continuing to move inland from there. Now, the last thing we did want to talk about today is Tropical Depression 20. You can see some of the outlines here. Uh, in the 500 millibar layer here, this is about 18,400 feet up. There is the large circulation being picked up here on the model of Tropical Depression 20. Of course, this is Paulette, and this is Tropical Storm Sally right over here. And we have some upper level low right here. We have a big trough of hot or a big trough of low pressure that's kind of sitting across here with a ridge trying to kind of nose its way in after this trough leaves here. This is a ridge of high pressure that's going to be broken down over the next several days. We can see that ridge kind of weaken, and by 24 hours from now, obviously, our two main players are on the board here. Now, what uh, really happens with Paulette once it moves out across the North Atlantic Basin is going to be the biggest determining factor along with how quick that Tropical Depression 20 gets organized over the next several days. That's likely to be our biggest two factors uh, for Tropical Depression 20. Now, of course, here on the model field, this is a legitimate hurricane uh, by late Wednesday. This is right, right around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can see here that we have a pretty strong weakness in the ridge here. The, these two ridges are separated as what happens is Paulette is now moving kind of off here into the North Atlantic, but these ridges are significantly broken down. The, they're not very strong at all. We have a very strong upper level low right here sitting uh, towards the on the northwest side of Africa nearing the Azor and Canary Islands at the time with somewhat of an upper level disturbance here in the uh, kind of the North Atlantic Basin towards the northwest of the uh, Cabo Verde Islands. 
So what actually ends up happening is since our storm is stronger here, it is further northward doing a beta drift basically, but also this very, uh, this very kind of weak ridge in here associated with a very strong trough is kind of helping our storm to actually feel more of a tug towards the north. And our storm just kind of wants to move generally northward. This big kind of weakness here, a big weakness across here, forcing this storm basically towards the north. And uh, we can see that really on the model field uh, at the five day mark, we don't really have a ridge building over top and the storm is just going to continue to move almost due north. And that's basically what happens. And uh, kind of the rest is history from there out and basically across the open North Atlantic basin, not really causing significant harm. Now, one thing that we will have to watch again is the rate of organization with Tropical Depression 20. And over the last couple of model runs, we have started to see more of a westerly drift, basically, in the models. And we see that here represented at the at z guidance today on Tropical Depression 20. The official forecast is kind of highlighted here. Really no significant change on the five-day mark, but it is still off towards the right of where the multi-model consensus, mainly the TVCN and TVCX models are, it is to the right of that forecast track right now. And probably uh, for at least the time being, it will sort of remain on that forecast track generally through here. So this is something that we're gonna have to watch pretty carefully over the next several days, but this could be somewhat of a threat down the road but it just remains to be the biggest question. Again, the rate of organization that occurs here with Tropical Depression 20 and what happens uh, to Trump or to Hurricane Paulette and the associated tropical ridge is going to matter uh, for the eventual evolution of Tropical Depression 20. All right, with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening and early morning. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more early tomorrow morning.